Yeah, yeah, yeah! Come and take a look at the snow. Bright white as far as your eyesight goes. Come and take a look at the fields of snow. I'll just get my coat, then we're good to go. Come and take a look at the lake. Let's have a quick skate before it gets late. Come and take a look at the frozen lake. Put your clothes on, mate. Don't make that mistake. Greetings, holiday shoppers. There are now 334 shopping days left until Christmas, and you know what that means. It means it's time for a whole brand new season of Christmas Creeps, your one-stop shop for holiday movies and TV shows all year round. My name is Joseph Wade. I'll be your host for this evening. Here with me tonight, as always, are my good pals and co-hosts, Johnny Five, the human robot. Hello, Joe. Hello, John. How are you? Oh, I've been worse. But you've been better, haven't you? Is that the, the vibe I'm getting off of you tonight? I didn't say that. You said that. I shouldn't have put those words in your mouth, and I apologize. I really do. You know, yeah. we, we, we got to start the new year off with some good vibes for once. Yeah, um, fuck you, Joe. Yeah, there you go. That's that's the spirit. That's the J5 we've come to know and love. Uh, anywho, Mr. Bradford is here as well. Brad. Ah, bringing some uh, very good energy into the show there. Johnny Five. Ah, uh, man, I was snowed in for three days and I couldn't get my damn medicine until today. So, oh, I'm sorry. That's actually oh, uh, there's nothing to let you know that your medicine actually works. Like not taking it for a couple days and uh, just your brain falls apart. It's nice to have that confirmation, though. Speaking of medicine, yeah. da- daddy's daddy needs his medicine. Mm. Uh, I don't hear Tangy that. P. I didn't hear a can crack. Bradford, what you got working with? I I have a bottle. It's actually, it's the last holdout. I've been saving it in the fridge for this very moment. The last holdout of Christmas. Oh, no, it's not Ecto Cooler, is it? (laughs) Yes, I've been saving it since childhood. It is a Victory Merry Monkey. It's a Belgian with cranberry, orange peel, cinnamon, and nutmeg. And I'm a fan. That sounds lovely. Yes. So I found at the store Flamin' Hot Cool Ranch Doritos. What? Okay. Okay. And I looked up a review of them. The, my, my personal review of them is like the Flamin' Hot comes after the Cool Ranch. Not quite the sequence you want. It's the um, icy hot of Doritos. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I found a website called taquitos.net where this guy just reviews every single like snack food he could find. And one of them was reviewing a 15-year-old bag of Doritos. Oh no! Just straight up Doritos, but uh, they were but cooler only near... ranch. Okay, fifteen years old though. Yeah, fifteen year old cooler ranch Doritos, which are the uh, out of all the Doritos, probably one of the ones you don't want to have fifteen years old. Any of the ones that have any sort of dairy product on them. Did they? Yeah, had they that's... turned into dust? Like I don't he know, said man. that they were still in one piece. They were absolutely rancid from like oh. the ranch whatever on them Ugh. and they were kind of stale but they still held their shape much like everything from 2007 <laughs> hey oh <laughs> i'm Good sorry night, everybody your, i'm sorry to interrupt your beer nerdery with with look at this cool thing i found on the internet though no Brad. that's that's way cooler than what i was doing so it's fine <laughs> all right and hey speaking of the last holdouts you know why not <laughs> grip it and rip it yes what you what do you have I have the very last Wicked Weed Brewing Pernicious IPA that's been in my refrigerator for, I kid you not, since Super Bowl Sunday of 2019. Wowzers. Is that even still (laughs) drinkable? We gonna find out, kids. (laughs) That's the before, that's from the before times. That's a before times beer. This is is from the long, long ago, yeah. Whoa. No, uh, (laughs) we... We held a, a small Super Bowl party here at the house. With, I guess it's three years ago now, and one of you know, and it was a BYOB affair. One of our friends brought a giant case of these Wicked Weed IPAs and had like three of them, and then he just left them for me, not realizing that I am not an IPA man, but I've grown to love it because it's the only way I'm going to get rid of it. Sometimes you just have to you have to do that. Sometimes the only way out is through. Correct. I have a, bo- a, sh- a bottle of body wash in my shower that I have in a similar situation with. Didn't like it. The Mrs. hated how it smelled, but I'm finishing this dumb bottle of body wash. <laughs> I don't like, I don't even like what body wash. I don't know why I bought it. 
What it, scent is it, if I may ask? It's the hair. It's like Harry's whatever pine. Oh, okay. Whatever. It's fine. Is it the one that makes you smell like a rock or a tree or a woolly mammoth? I or smell a fig. Like, I smell like I've run through a pine forest after I'm done. It's not unpleasant, <laughs> um, but it's just a different different I mean, situation when you've been working with Dial for 20 plus years, you know? I mean, I get beard oil that's in the general direction, but like you don't put that everywhere, though. Yeah, I think Harry's kind of missed the memo on that one. This episode is brought to no. This episode is brought to you by soap that makes you smell like dirt. This episode <sighs> is brought to you by that, that shampoo and conditioner all-in-one I found that was, like, the only decent one I've ever had, and now I can't find it again. I know it had a grapefruit on the bottle, and I think it was Garnier. Someone please help. <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird double standard we've established in this country where, you know, ladies get shampoo that makes you uh, pretend to have an orgasm, and guys get shampoo that makes you t- smell like a rock. I think we got the rough end of the stick on that well, one. <laughs> well, I have not cut my hair since well before the before time, so I have to use, like, real shampoo. Oh, well. John is in the shower, like, whipping his hair around, just like in the commercials. Mm-hmm. And that's a mental image I have to live with for the rest of my life. Since well, I that's on you. That's Wicked on weed, you, here we come. Speaking of speaking of own goaling your own brain, uh, <laughs> I posted Wizards Christmas every day in the in our private chat and now i've had it stuck in my head all day and i don't think it had the effect on any of you gentlemen probably because you didn't watch it no i definitely did and i was very delighted by it (laughs) you've you've heard this song before yes i think vaguely at some point but i've never actually like sat and paid attention and watched the video for it before it is very good it is very 70s and it is very stuck in my head still it's it's from that see it's a thing that we don't have here in the U.S. where every year the U.K. tries to, you know, have its – like, everybody tries to get the number one Christmas single every year. Yeah. And, like, bands just would just put out Christmas songs to try and compete for this. And this was Wizard's song that year, and it was it was only beaten by the band Slade with Merry Christmas, Everybody, which is an even better song. Yeah, they really got kind of <sighs> Isn't this kind the of thing that beat. Killing the Name won one year? Yeah, they tried to like do a protest vote, and we got Rage Against the Machine to win that year. This is like 2009, I want to say. That sounds like a very 2009 thing to do. Kind of. But anyway, gents, hey, welcome to Season 8 of Christmas Creeps. Oh my goodness. If you've made it this far, congratulations. I love you. And welcome to a ridiculous ride that is never, ever going to stop. It's Christmas every day. That's a Christmas Creeps guarantee. Uh, but no, we are the Christmas podcast that swears, and I hope you're fucking okay with that. If you're not, that's okay. We have plenty of friends who are happy to have you. But if you are a fan of ours, we definitely encourage you to shoot us a line at xmascreeps at gmail.com. Like uh, these two gents did, we have some listener mail we want to kick off the show with this year. Uh, we got some very exciting emails right around about Christmas time. A cup, and one of them honestly, genuinely, truly floored me, and that's the one I'm going to start with tonight. Uh, so I'll just cut to the chase. We got an email from the director of one of the films we made fun of. Yeah, I got like a severed horse's head from Ron Howard. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. That was me uh, pretending to be Ron Howard. I'm sorry. Oh fuck. <laughs> I already I already sold that thing on eBay. Damn it! Uh, hey, I would like a cut of those profits. Well, hey, if anybody out there is really good at forging like certificates of authenticity, uh, hit me up. <laughs> Fair enough. No, we got an email from Brian Michael Stoller, the director of Santa Stole Our Dog. Oh no! <laughs> I, when I saw the email, when I saw the the tagline hit our inbox, I was genuinely terrified because I thought. <laughs> oh no, somebody found out about us and we're in big trouble. (laughs) But no, Mr. Stoller was actually thrilled that we even watched his movie. Stand-up guy, Mr. Dodo. Mr. Dodo himself, Mr. Stoller is, you know, he's a cool dude and we appreciate you. I just want to read you a little bit here. Um, He says, I just listened to your full podcast for Santa Stole Our Dog. I sincerely, thoroughly enjoyed it. You were spot on with many of your observations about the film. 
And then he points out, like, we made fun of the fact that there was a very small production team. He says, I am actually the writer, producer, director, editor, gopher, set builder, and coffee maker on the film. And you know what? I, I got to respect that. <laughs> yeah, and I want to be clear with that. When we say that, we're making a reference to the critic where Jay's student film listed him as the writer, director, producer, main star, and caterer. Mm -hmm. Craft services. Yes. <laughs> Uh-oh. Is there... Uh, Is that a siren? That's a yeah. siren. I just heard. They're coming to get us for, for movie libel. Oh, no. The trap has been sprung. No. Um, I read this email, too, and he was super nice, and I feel a little yes. bit bad for for bagging on his movie because you know you do the you do the best with what you got yeah, i mean you, you did a better damn job than the karate christmas miracle guy yeah i'll give you that every single day of the week true but no uh brian michael stiller if you're still listening we appreciate you and we and we're so thrilled that you listened to our show and had, took the time to write to us I mean, um, if we get an email from that guy i'll just give the guy the address of a random mcdonald's parking lot and just tell him i'll fight his son <laughs> i won't be there but i mean i'll just tell him I pulled that trick in middle school, and it was it was very satisfying. Um, True story. You, you can't you can't just leave us. You can't just leave us with that. Come on, <laughs> dish girlfriend. No, some kid in middle school. I was in seventh grade, and this kid threatened to like beat me up. I, mind you, this was like a five foot tall little shrimpy kid, and I was like, I was just edging up towards six feet at this point. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's kind of like you 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 try to pick out the biggest kid in the school in the the yard and, and just kick his ass prison rules prison rules okay and i was and i was like yeah okay fine i'll meet you back behind the school buses after school okay fine i'll be there and then i just fucking went home <laughs> <laughs> and the next day he was like dude what the fuck you said we were gonna fight and i just kind of laughed and went you stayed late after school uh, <laughs> fucking idiot. hey everybody lovely. this guy's changed after school because he likes books <laughs> That was my closest encounter with a fight, and I'm pretty sure if he could have fought me, he would have. <laughs> oh boy, good times, great oldies. <laughs> uh, but we have a, we also have a second email to address tonight. We got an email from a listener named Mike, a new listener. Welcome to the show, Mike. And I was a little bit starstruck because apparently this man works for Stern Pinball, and for all of the ways that we you know use this show to basically like stop and try to analyze movies that have pinball machines in them this guy was very appreciative of that fact <laughs> mike says i love your podcast i wasn't able to listen to every episode since there are so many but every year at christmas from now on i will catch up as best i can i've listened to all your stocking stuffers and i've gotten up through your christmas shoes episode but he also says that you know he works for stern pinball and he appreciates the fact that we stop our show dead in its tracks to try and figure out what pinball machine is featured in a certain scene. As one does. As one yes. should. Always. As one should. But yeah, I remember we definitely wasted a lot of time on that with um, Reindeer Games, and we did it with Bad Santa as well. And every time a pinball machine appears, I'll, we'll do our, our level best. That's <laughs> all yeah, I can I mean, say. Sometimes, like, we didn't mention it in Home Sweet Home Alone. That's because it just, like, you could tell what it was. Remind me, Joan, what was it? I honestly don't remember, but I was like, you could just see the backlash there. It was just like, yeah, there it is. Okay, yeah. But when it's just like the side uh, the side of the cabinet with like a, a certain weird design, we, we're we big enough nerds that we kind of have to stop and go, what is that? Let's try and figure this yeah. out. Yeah, yeah the, the, the fun is get, getting like half of the side of like the insert coin button and being like, I think I know what that one is. Yes. I think that's Earthshaker. And, and sometimes we're right and sometimes we're mega turbo wrong. But that's the fun of the game. But also, Mike turned us on to the subject of this week's episode, a Christmas short from 1986 titled Christmas Every Day. Now, gentle friends, uh, first impressions of Christmas Every Day. Let's just jump straight into it. Do you remember the Family Guy pinball machine? Yes. I do. Uh, there's a reskin of it that's at the Shrek machine, and I played it once at a CC's Pizza. And instead of the Stewie mini pinball, it's Donkey mini pinball, except the donkey figurine was missing off the play field because it was a CC's pizza. Because <laughs> it was a CC's pizza and they slammed it into the, the game center and then for... <laughs> yes. And then like, it still takes quarters, it's technically working. Yeah. Oh, jeez. When, like, the left <laughs> flipper sends the ball up two inches. Yeah, the first time I played Twilight Zone, it was like that. 
Oh, and it kind of made me sad. That's a shame. Like you, yeah. you want to you want to find a pinball place that actually takes care of their machines and not just you know whatever was going to keep the kids happy. I remember one Problem time is... I played a pinball uh, Twilight Zone in a Chinese restaurant. Like pearls, I was too young to appreciate it though. Pearls before swine. Oof. Yeah. The other problem is eventually with the people that take care of their pinball machines, they realize this will get a lot less damaged at home. <laughs> That's the truth. Yeah. That's certainly the truth. Our one of our local pinball places made that exact calculation and took all like eighteen of his pinball machines and just took them to his house. I don't fucking blame him. Not, nope. not at all. Not a not a lick. But yeah. So anyway, um, our our new listener, new friend Mike, turned us on to this week's topic of discussion. It's a nineteen eighty six Christmas short titled "Christmas Every Day," based on a short story by. What's his name? Edgar Rice Burroughs? No, that can't be right. Um, Edward James Olmos? Edgar Wright Burroughs? Philip no, the, Seymour... No, no, no. The middle name is definitely Dean, because I was like, ah, it's Richard Dean Anderson. <laughs> Jeffrey Dean Morgan? No, it's William Dean Howells. Jimmy Dean Sausages. <laughs> <laughs> Professor... No, 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 no. I got one more. Alan Dean Foster. <laughs> The Star Wars guy? Did you write Star Wars stuff? Alan Dean Foster, yeah. He wrote a bunch of like the original Star Wars books. Splinter of the Mind's Eye. Uh, I think the the official like uh, episode four adaptation. Wow, we're getting way off into the weeds, like off oh, the yeah. jump. Uh, <laughs> based, is this, oh, this... damn, yeah. He wrote the original novelization, like Ghostwriting of George Lucas. I did not know that, and I had that damn book. Yeah, it's a great book. But no, Christmas Every Day, based on an 1892 short story by William Dean Howells, a writer who, uh, he's in the, the tradition of, like, American realist authors like uh, Henry James and Edith Wharton, and, like, I already want to fall asleep talking about this guy. <laughs> I, I'm losing, like, context. Is this, like, if Norman Rockwell wrote stuff instead of painted stuff? Is that Basically. what you're going for? Basically, okay. yes. Ah, uh, okay. That uh, helps a lot, I, actually. <laughs> I took an entire college course on American realist uh, literature and all i can tell you is henry james wrote books <laughs> that's all i remember from that entire course but no um so this is a short story about a girl who wishes that christmas could be every day and the horrifying consequences that happen therein when this actually comes to pass so this is an animated feature yes for, uh, from 86 and it's in that paper doll animation style where everything kind of has joints. Um, you know, the faces are still animated using sort of traditional methods. But um, you can tell that a lot of sort of the motion is pivoting, pivoting these paper dolls. It reminds me a lot of, in terms of how much it creeps me out, I should say. Of stuff like Angela Anaconda. Thank you. We were talking about this before we started, and I, yeah, I was. This is exactly what I thought of too. Of it's, just like it's just a little unsettling because it's I don't know it's a little weird and a little bit of it's because it's kind of I don't really want to say bad, but I do kind of want to say bad as well. It's you know, it, it's, a, it's it's a it's a little janky in an unsettling way. I think for Angela Anaconda, that was kind of the point, but I'm wondering if that was the intention here or not. And I'm going to go I, with no. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say this This was more kind of a, a pointed attempt to make it seem... Like in a storybook. Step, in step with like a storybook, like the style of the story that's being told. Yeah. Yes. I, and, so. and to kind of give you a better picture of like what the animation kind of looks like, it's like a Terry Gilliam sort of animation, but not sarcastic and creepy, you know? It's it's very much that style, but very sincere and very much for children. Yeah, and this had to have been this was like CBS primetime, wasn't it? Yeah, this aired the same year and like two weeks before like a Garfield Christmas and Will Vinton's Claymation Christmas. Like it's that same kind of era of animated special. Yeah, I mean we watched it on YouTube. The version I watched um, it was about 20 minutes long. The most un- unsettling thing about that was just there was one point where there were two commercial breaks three minutes apart. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oof. You got to think like one's got one of those has to be like a news ad break and the other has to be an ad for like Domino's Pizza or something. 
But no, um, first impressions. What did you guys think of this thing? I didn't hate it. I like I, I liked certain parts of it. Um, it works as sort of a Christmas special with sort of a point. It actually has a real point to make, I guess. Sort of, and, yes. And and our our place as a Christmas movie podcast that operates year round kind of has to reckon with that point now, don't we? It feels very on the nose. This is our reality that they're living in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What is Pinball Man trying to tell us? I, w- I want to ask you two a question, actually. Okay. How has your experience of Christmas changed since you've started doing this podcast? Or has it? Um, mainly for me, I have to control myself about stepping in with way too detailed knowledge of Christmas movies and people talk about them. <laughs> yes, that is a real struggle. Because then I have to explain why the fuck I know so much about Christmas with the Cranks. Why do I have a top five Christmas movies list in my brain at all times? Why have I seen most, if not all, of the Talking Dog Christmas movies and only the Christmas ones? <sighs> why have I suddenly become an aficionado in the Silent Night, Deadly Night series? Because it's good. Well, two is good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is true. Why do I that care was... so much about any of this that was I, actually the one it w- was about like the people were talking about silent night deadly night and i had to stop myself from talking too much about parts one and three <laughs> because they were talking about the garbage day stuff <laughs> and i was just like you could just watch two three sucks uh two rehashes all of the stuff you care about from one you're good yeah yeah silent night deadly night two really is the perfect film isn't it <laughs> i say that with like a knowing wink but that's kind of it's kind of true. It gives you everything you need from like two entire films, and it's entirely it's fully thoroughly entertaining. But no, the this the sheer fact. So okay, let's break this down real quick. The story is about a little girl. Okay, so it's it's a family telling a father telling a story to his family at on Christmas Eve, right? Yes, and yes. he's telling he's relating the story of. Their great, I guess it's their great grandmother or their grandmother. A hundred his grandmother. It's his grandmother. A hundred years in the past. So presumably, this takes place. The story takes place in eighteen eighty seven, right? Yeah. All out. The his grandmother named Tilly is gifted with this little. Uh, it's like a Christmas castle ornament that she puts on her tree, and she makes a Christmas wish to it because it's supposedly magical. And she wishes that it would be Christmas every day forever and ever. And the Christmas fairy, who is voiced by somebody important that I just forgot. Edie McClurg or Miriam Flynn, one of the two. I mean, it's either Grace from Ferris Bueller or it's Aunt Catherine. It is Edie McClurg, yes. Which one? She is She is the Christmas Grace. fairy. She's Grace. Grace, yes. It's, it's it's the mom from Bobby's world. Um, but she, she grants the girl, she grants Tilly's wish, but only for one year. Because she knows good and well that no one's going to put up with Christmas every day for the rest of eternity. And then they set about doing the Christmas thing. So Christmas morning comes, the kids get a puppy for Christmas, everybody has lots of good food, it's great, they go to bed. Next morning they get up, the kids get a puppy for Christmas, they have lots of good food, everything's great. And they go to bed, but they know something's weird. Something weird is going on. <laughs> By day three, everyone is completely over this. <laughs> a third puppy enters the picture. More good food. Everyone has a good day, I suppose. But the, now, you know, things are starting to go awry. And then, the, and then the dad tells us it was Christmas at Lincoln's birthday. It was Christmas at Washington's birthday. It was Christmas on Easter, and it was still Christmas on April Fool's Day. To which that made me stop and go, hang on, wait a minute. When was Easter in 1886? Oh, God. You would, wouldn't you? You would, you sick. (laughs) I did. I definitely did. All right. Okay. Assuming this story takes place in 1886. Well, here, was it Christmas 1886? (laughs) Because then April Fool's Day would be in 1887, wouldn't it? 
Aha, but I thought of that too. Okay, God, <laughs> you are the worst and the best. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Easter Sunday in 1886 was April 25th, but Easter mm-hmm. Sunday 1887 was April 10th. Still after April Fool's Day. Yeah. So, Dad's story is bunk. I'm sorry, and we're out of here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good night, everybody. No. Anywho, Christmas is, is continuing all the time into perpetuity. But the thing that's going on here is, so people are still celebrating Christmas, which means all of all of the turkeys get eaten up because they're having Christmas dinner every single day. All of the Christmas trees get cut down because they're having Christmas every single day, which I don't understand, but okay, I'll allow it. <laughs> yeah, that one's, Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's gifting everybody else Christmas gifts because Christmas is happening every single day, which is causing a gigantic drain on the economy. Everybody is becoming poor because they're spending too much money on Christmas. And I'm not extrapolating that. That literally happens in the special. (laughs) And now we get to the interesting part about all of this and not about dates. Not about me being pedantic. Not about you being pedantic. Brad, take it away. It's about free will. Okay, go on. At first, when we when we get the reveal that Christmas is happening every day, you think, "Oh, okay, so it's like a weird magic thing, right?" It's it's mo- oh, it's almost more like a Groundhog Day type situation, right? Yes, exactly. They wake up, the food's already prepared, the cri- the presents are there. Great, good. But later, it throws a wrinkle into the story when we find out that people are going to the store and buying turkeys and cutting down trees and buying additional copies of the gifts they've already given and now now my friends we get into a very interesting question about free will if everybody hates doing christmas every day and yet they still need to go out and prepare and pay for christmas every single day are they under some sort of spell that yeah. keeps them from not doing Christmas anymore. Yeah, what is compelling these people to continue with this charade? Which is the most interesting question of this entire production. What is going on here? I agree. Because there's two ways to look at this. It's like a monkey's paw kind of curse. There's two ways to look at this thing. You, it's either crisp, like December 25th keeps happening in perpetuity every single day just resets and starts over or every day on the calendar is now christmas day and that the second one is the one that they've chosen to go with here (laughs) and it it i think that has a lot more problems from a storytelling standpoint i mean it i get what they're going with with like oh it caused a bunch of problems because you know stuff is running out sure but then we get into the issue of people are doing this of their own volition. And also, they're buying Christmas... Like, there's a scene where a woman's buying a turkey. She's buying it on Christmas Day to prepare for Christmas Day. Like, they know what's happening next. Yes. <laughs> it's... I don't like it. I like the Groundhog Day one better. Right, because that, that then at least... It's Christmas every day for you, for whoever the story is happening to. I, I I think even if it was the Groundhog Day version, though, the moral would still remain the same because everybody would get bored of it, right? No, because in, in Groundhog Day, nobody else knows that it's happening over and over again. It's just the one person. Yeah, but it would be a moral for Tilly. Here, here's guess. a question. Yeah, what, yeah. If they, what if they do know, but it's like Wreck-It Ralph where it's just like it's a living? <laughs> Well, the Christmas I mean, fairy I... has paid me 25 k a year to continue with this charade, so I guess I'll take it. I mean, I think that's kind of what it is. It's this sort of, like, mass hysteria where it's like, all right, well, tomorrow's Christmas, so I better prepare for Christmas on Christmas. I don't know, man. It's the same, like, phenomenon as... Fuck, dude, I don't know. <laughs> Football? I mean, I get, I like, get oh, what... the, the big game is on Sunday. I gotta go out and buy salsa and chips. I guess. That I get what they're going with, but I think if they'd gone with the Groundhog Day one, it would be a little bit of a harder sell because if you're going to be Groundhog Dayed on any day of the year, Christmas is a pretty good day to be Groundhog Dayed. Yeah, you don't got to go to work. 
you get to eat you already have a bunch of bomb ass food in your fridge you get to hang out with your family presumably all of the people that you love the most like but then i can see where the the drama would come in because like oh you had to unwrap the same present over and over again you have to pre- you have to pretend to be thankful for, to the same people over the same present over and over again and i i understand how that monotony could become a nightmare of your own making yeah i i think they just kind of tried to do a little too much with it and i think the groundhog day approach would have been a better one maybe but then it wouldn't but then it would have just been i don't know i I, I get what they're i get what they're doing what they're ultimately saying is if christmas happened every day then christmas no longer becomes special that's the moral of this story and you know I, I had to do a little bit of soul searching on this one because, man, it's kind of pointed directly at me and her, isn't it? You guys never answered my question, by the way. Of I, you at, <laughs> answered how it impacts maybe your like your your life throughout the year, but does this? Do you think doing this podcast increases or decreases the value of Christmas to you as a person when Christmas rolls around? I personally don't think it decreases it. Because once we've done, once we're done with the Christmas season, we kind of, we, you know, we take generally a three week to four week break off from the show as we've done it, kind of put away last Christmas, decompress, and then just the, the calendar flips over and I just gear right back up for next Christmas. And like, I'm already thinking out 12 months ahead here. Yeah. So like it's just to me the process just starts over and like my it really hasn't changed much of how I how I celebrate the holidays at all. Mm. It's just now I have this extra thing that I do that I either can use to celebrate the holidays better or just torture you two with. <laughs> and <laughs> that's that's kind of on me. See I, what I'm really trying to say here is I don't think it's affected the way I celebrate Christmas at all because This is kind of what I asked for. Yeah. So I'm fine with it. I like it. There's like jokes on you, monkeys. Paul, this is what I wanted. Exactly. Yeah. I I, I don't mind it. I think maybe it enhances my enjoyment of Christmas a little bit. Because I know more about Christmas. I know more about trivia of Christmas. And it gets me thinking about it earlier in the year. And I get a little bit excited for it every time we do this podcast. Which is nice. See, See, that's what it's all about. I mean, for me, it's... I, 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 I'm, a, I'm a broken person as we've gone into in the past um so for me the movies are kind of disconnected from it because the movies that are like um if not bad at least worth you know making some yucks about it's like well that's just fun to do because they're silly goofy or bad movies you know and the ones that are good they're good because they're good movies you know i don't think we really watch any movie that's like bad but still like hold like a special place because if it's bad it's just bad and that's the end of the sentence you know exactly mm. well and i and i think too kind of the nature of what we do and how we tend to choose our christmas movies and specials and stuff you know we always kind of make the joke that it's a christmas movie until we say it isn't but that is kind of our excuse to talk about things other than christmas on this show and to you know if we ever do get tired of christmas for a day fuck it we'll we'll drag out the one james bond movie that kind of sort of has snow in it or <laughs> you know we'll talk about literally anything else hell we 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 specifically don't watch a christmas movie for our christmas at day episode for a reason and it's because right. we're so sick of it at that point <laughs> i mean we got a wild hair up our ass and watched hocus pocus once you know shit happens yeah. think yeah. yes so i guess all we're really saying is you know or we watched what the last Boy Scout, where the the most tangential, like the most Christmassy thing happens, is somebody draws a picture of Santa that shows up in one scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It happens. And the reason we do that is so some bottom feeder website out there can write a listicle about you know twelve Christmas movies you didn't know were Christmas movies, and then they'll link back to our podcast because well these guys say it is, so it must be. Yeah, that's where I get my content from. Yeah, that's the dream, right? Yeah, um, <laughs> feed that SEO mill, man. I have another question for you about this movie. Okay, and it's another very, it's a very pedantic question. 
So let's presume that everybody's under some sort of mass hysteria, fugue state, mind control, whatever. Fugue state. Fugue state. Is it fugue? It's not fugue. Yes. Fugue state. Thank you. Learn something new every day. Anyhow, presumably this happens the world over, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, Fuego State would be something different. Fuego State. <laughs> Tierra del Fuego. What happens? What What's what's going on in places where they don't normally culturally celebrate Christmas every year? Are they doing Christmas now because of this? Brett, are you asking, do they know it's Christmas? Do they know it's Christmas time? <laughs> I, I guess they wouldn't because everybody would just do like whatever they do on Christmas. Right? I guess. Like, I don't know. So, like, if you're Jewish, you just go to the Chinese restaurant every day? Yeah, that's kind of what I... That's kind of where I'm going with this. Or, yeah, or if, if, if you're in... If you're in somewhere else in the world that doesn't really celebrate Christmas, it's just a normal day. Or if it I happens... Guess, if it happens to be on the right year, like, well, I guess it's the first night of Kwanzaa again. But for <laughs> me, it was Tuesday. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's the fifth night of Hanukkah over and over again. Uh, 800,000 crazy nights. <laughs> uh, See, I don't know where I'm going. That's an I, Adam I, Sandler movie I would be into. It's like a, a version of Eight Crazy Nights where it just happens over and over again to him until he tries to kill himself. Uh, so maybe, what, uh, if, oh, what if Eight did, Crazy Nights was 50 First Dates? <laughs> did I ever tell you a really fun tradition that one of my mutuals has? No. On Go for it. Mutual, one of my mutuals on Twitter does every every year in December they do eight crazy nights and they watch eight crazy nights eight nights in a row. See, that's like our <laughs> brand of crazy, but like even I can't fathom doing that. Yeah, I, I can't imagine doing that, but God bless oh, them, they do it. So, it's ridiculous. So and they this... they hand out awards for everybody who actually attends all eight nights. Oh man, that actually sounds kind of fun now. A little bit, but that's their um, thing. We got to come up with our own thing. Yeah, exactly. So you know what you're asking is like, is it December 25th every day of the year, basically? Because that's you know people who don't celebrate Christmas, like, well, it's well if it's Christmas every day, it's like, well, I guess it's December 25th again. What do we do? Well, we have an answer to that because there's a there's a giant man that for some reason in the town there's a a giant calendar and the man. There's a man that goes and stamps it with a Christmas stamp every day. Yeah. And well, it's, it's not December 25th. It's just, it's Christmas. It's so, Christmas so it... every day. It's not, the title of the movie is not December 25th every day. The title of the movie is Christmas every day. Okay. Maybe that guy should stop fucking stamping shit. Maybe it's his fault. Well, it's Tilly. We all know it's Tilly's fault. Yeah, the banner says Tilly's fault. Ba- <laughs> the big <laughs> banner. So... Tilly's sister finds out that Tilly is the one who made this wish and cursed everybody to hell. And so her family tells the world about it by making a gigantic city-sized banner that says, It's Tilly's fault, and I love this. It's, this is like the 1890s. It has to be put up by, like, a hot air balloon or something. Dirigibles. There's some good goofs in this, like where... um. She's running away from home, and there's that old woman on the porch. She's like, I'm running away from home. She's like, good. That lady and, knows knows what she did. And the, the same joke that other movies do, like uh, 8-Bit Christmas did this, of just, like, swapping things on the fly as people are adjusting the story between oh, yeah. the piano, the radio, and the television. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I'll, I'll give I'll give this, I'll allow it in this one, because they're, they're first now. They are yeah. first. They, they did it first. They did it first. So, yeah. Uh, the the end of the story is the Christmas fairy shows back up and says, like, I'm ready to make it Christmas every day forever and ever, like you originally asked. And Tilly replies, no, I don't want there to be Christmas ever again. And I wish they had made that sequel. Bit of an overcorrect there, Tilly. Bit of an overcorrect. And that's when you realize that this is an after-school special about taking all things in moderation. Yes. Hi, kids. I'm here to tell you about a drug called Christmas. <laughs> Christmas is a fun sometimes drug every once in a while. But if you do it every day or twice a month for eight years, you're going to have a bad time. Yeah. You know, she's going to take Christmas at special parties with special music. And make sure you drink lots of water. And have a babysitter. There's a time and a place for everything, and it's called college. That's true. <laughs> um, That's Christmas every day, everybody. 
the last thing so, well i'll talk about a little bit about this as as like a, a product so this is a story that's actually been remade a bunch of times fittingly for a, a, a story about christmas happening every day uh the first of which i was surprised to learn came from a tv show called studio 57 which as in heinz as in heinz 57 it's an anthology tv series of like one act you know 30 minute dramas produced by the heinz corporation for the dumont network those fucking words yeah <laughs> i went down a whole weird rabbit hole about heinz yeah. and dumont today uh, yeah this is where leave to beavers pilot was on huh. yeah yeah it like weird weird old tv history is is neat to me but also so they did that then this special happened then this special was remade in 1996 as a made-for-TV movie for the Family Channel. Like a full feature-length Christmas Every Day special. Movie. Excuse me. Then that movie was remade in 2006 as Christmas Do-Over for ABC Family. And I'm pretty sure at some point we, we looked at both of those and said, Hey, wow, these have the same plot. Not realizing that they are literally the same story. <laughs> and I think at some point we said what we wanted to do was to just do episodes on each and every one of these in succession. Is that what we're doing for the next three months? I mean, I'm game if you guys are. No, no. Oh. I, I, mean, I personally I, yeah. really don't want to do this. Okay, I thank you for saying it out loud what we were all, all thinking. Right. Were there any fucking dog fart movies this year? What, what have we missed? It's Red Boxing Day. What did we miss this 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 season? That's a good question. Did we do um, the, what? What was Netflix's big Christmas to do this year? Oh, that was the um, the Castle for Christmas like castle. thing where Carrie always has a, a castle, and then Brooke Shields tries to buy it from him. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> in, 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 in English, please. Wait, what? Okay, who are these people? The guy from a from the Princess Bride. Is okay. a Scottish lord, and he has the castle, and he's losing money on it. So he tries to sell it to this like successful women's lit author who has some weird family connection to it. And guess what? They fall in love. Oh, okay. All right. It's, so it's one a, of it's those. a rom com. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So they did a Lifetime movie this year. For they did. Yeah, movie. I mean, they're Netflix. They are like Lifetime's direct competition at this point. Hmm. So, okay, I've got the list of all of Netflix's Christmas movies that came out last year. I'm going to read I'm going to there, read you these. There, there are 27. There are 13. Okay. There are 13 of them. I have made up one of them. Oh, I like this game. I love it. Okay. Actually, so there are actually so there are actually 12 and you've made up one is what you're saying. Okay. Uh I may need to pare this down because the 13 is kind of a lot. So, Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, give six. Us, give us six where one is made up. Okay, I can do that. All right, so All right. I just want to say that, is it Robert Vince? Robert Vince is letting me down right now. His most two, most recent two listings are Pup Academy, which is Air Bud but School. <laughs> and then Scaredy Cats, which is apparently three girls turn into cats and everything is Halloween themed. My hero, Puppademia. <laughs> I'm like, none, none of these animals are doing sports or Christmas. <sighs> I, I, I ain't got nothing for that one. Disney, right. is, Disney is not in the, the buddies business right now, and for good reason. Let, let, lay those, lay those okay. Netflix movies on us. Here we go. A Boy Called Christmas, Love Hard, A Castle for Christmas, Single All the Way, Father Christmas is back, and David and the Elves. Which one of those did I just make up? Single all the way. John. Incorrect. Jonathan. Oh, oh. Father Christmas is back. Incorrect. They're all real. <laughs> all, oh. Trick question. Trick question, Whoa. my dudes. They were all real. And that's just six of them. There are seven more. <laughs> So you didn't actually make up one. No, I didn't. I love this. <laughs> well, hit us thank, with the others. Thank you. Okay, the others were The Princess Switch 3, Romancing the Star, uh, Robin Robin, A California Christmas, colon, City Lights, 1,000 <laughs> Miles from Christmas, Grumpy Christmas, 
a Naija Christmas and Christmas again? Is that the same, also the same plot? Let's see. Christmas again. Stuck in a time loop at Christmas time, a family man oh. who hates the holidays starts to learn valuable lessons about what's truly important in life. See, this is the thing that we were talking about with Groundhog Day. This so it's is literally the Groundhog, Groundhog Day, Day at Christmas. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, you ruined it. No, we're going to have to. No, we're not. You know... We are not doing that. Yeah. That's. Why didn't they just make more dog fart movies? <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the, the surprising thing. I just named you all. 13 of these, not a single dog fart among them. Hmm. That's Nothing wild. for the kids. <laughs> for the kids. Nothing we've for the really kids. Left, we've really left the children behind. No, the no kids dog... got Home Sweet Home Alone, and they're going to like it, damn it. Yeah, but that's on Disney+. Plus. I know. So they got to go to Disney for their Christmas shit. Hmm. <sighs> yeah, but that's no, that's Christmas every day. I th- I think we're we're good to jump over to the crankometer where we rate these things. I feel a little bit bad taking this to the crankometer because it's such a short little special, but you know, we kind of, we kind of reserve uh, the stocking stuffers for TV episodes. And we did do uh Garfield Christmas as well. I believe, That's true. We full, did do that full fat episode. But well. that is like a special of a TV show though. I want yeah, I think it was, I think it was first, but it like, it has the same animation quality and style as the series that came after it. True. Right. Before but then, it or during it? I don't know. But then we I also think it did... was prior. It was before it. It was right as Garfield was starting to get big, but before Garfield and Friends came out. Right. Like they started it out as, as a series of specials before they spun it off into a TV show. Correct. Kind of like Peanuts, which hey, we also did uh, the Great Pumpkin as a crankometer. So. Yeah. Okay. Ex- excuse me, Hankometer get my facts straight here anyway the crankometer is our patented xy axis for rating christmas movies the x-axis is how Christmassy a film or in this case special is and the y-axis is how good the film or special is so gentle friends christmas every day how Christmassy? it's pretty Christmassy. Mm-hmm. not bad it's yeah it, it kind of gets across the message that they're going for is that christmas is special because of what it is and trying to make it something it's not right takes that away and yeah and i think that's a perfectly valid lesson and a moral to to kick and convey to, to convey to shit god to convey <laughs> to kids this wicked weed i swear is is doing a number on me I mean, it's kind of like how a few years ago walmart tried to make easter like christmas too like they were trying to put forth like buying like big like christmas level presents for easter really yeah Oh, yeah, like whole Easter baskets with, like, all kinds of stuff, like, pre-packaged into them. Yeah. Weird. That was a thing. I did. I had no idea. You know, I I like the style. I'm I'm okay with this kind of sense of humor that it has. I appreciate the story that it's telling. I'm going to say this is a solid four. I oh, enjoyed I, this. I'll, yeah, that's fine. Is Christmas or quality? Christmas. Christmas. Yeah, I'll go with that. It has a it has a nice kind of feel good ish message. Yeah, yeah. But then also, like, I, yeah, you're right. I guess I did kind of go into the y axis with my my uh, uh, thoughts there. But I, I definitely enjoyed it uh, for what it is. It's it's a a weird little '80s Christmas special that I had never heard of or seen before, and I think like I appreciate having seen it now. And I'm quality wise, I'm going to give this a three. I think. Yeah, I think another thing that kind of factors into both ratings is it's not overly preachy and doesn't beat you over the head with it. Like, I mean, it's very mm-hmm. easy to grok what the what the what the message is, but it doesn't like come out full front and say it to your face multiple times, which is nice. Good job not doing that. Yeah, and but... as the animation quality, like you can at least tell what the hell's going on compared to like Cosmic Christmas. That's that's yeah. where I was gonna go. Yeah, like I was gonna directly compare this to Cosmic Christmas, not in a not in a good way either. Like this head and shoulders makes makes a truckload more sense than anything in Cosmic Christmas. Yeah. Oh goodness. So yeah, I think we're gonna land on a positive four, positive three on uh, Christmas every day. That's a heck of a way to start out the new year. Yeah. It's a damn sight better than Rap City Street Kids, I'll tell you that. Oh, be nice. Be nice to Rap City Street Kids. It never did nothing to you, except showed you a good time. 
Okay, that's fair. I, I gotta... <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> oh, you. Uh, yeah, the last thing I'm going to say about Christmas Every Day is, like, I noticed the credit at the end, animation created and directed by Ed Newman and Monica Kendall. And that sent me down a whole other rabbit hole trying to figure out who the heck these people were. And it turned out it's like a little mom and pop animation operation run out of Chicago. These two uh, animators just kind of working on little shorts and TV commercials here and there. And yeah. like their their first one of their first credits was they worked on Ralph Bakshi's Lord of the Rings uh, cartoon. It's like and... a it's like an eighties small boo. I like it. Yeah. So the the calabash that exists now on the on that website that's the same one, right? Like it is the, with like the hamburger helper commercial, the Ducktales, and everything. It is. Yeah. Uh, apparently, in two thousand and five, they that couple sold the studio off to like some of their employees, and now it's entirely okay. employee run. Oh, mm-hmm. nice. Neat. So they kind of cashed out, and uh, now they're living the good life. So I got to give them props because that's a that's a heck of a success story. But good for them. I, I appreciated this. I'm glad our friend Mike. Uh, suggested this to us because I had a good time with it and I hope you did too so if you want to check this out we will put this in our show notes so you can go and watch it and uh, yeah stay tuned for more Christmas creeps coming soon in 2022 that's all I've got to say because uh, you know we're we're just getting this party started we had to really do some uh, serious reflection on who we are and why we do what we do here <laughs> but we? uh we we are very bad at navel gazing, even though we all we do is talk about ourselves. <laughs> um, but if you want to send us anything at all, please tweet at us at Christmas Creeps on Twitter. Email us xmascreeps at gmail dot com. Anything you want, um, let us know what you think of the show. Let other people know that you enjoy the show. Go to iTunes and Spotify and basically everywhere you get podcasts, you'll find us. So leave us a star rating and a review. Um, final word guys what do you want to leave the, our good our good listeners with as we round out this episode thank you so much for listening uh come back for more uh we're always happy to dish it out if you can take it i also hereby apologize we i kind of promised to you guys that we would be in and out in under an hour and we are scraping that that limit right there and this is an hour long podcast and i'm sorry that's okay i had a wonderful time and i hope you did too i did I'll kick your ass later. Not tomorrow, but like I'll remember it later. <laughs> but soon and for the rest of my life. No, just the once. Okay. Joe's gonna tell you to show up in the the bus the bus lot of a, an elementary school and then just <laughs> ditch you. That's my signature move. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for Christmas creeps, I'm Joseph Wade. I'm Bradford. And I'm Johnny Five, the human robot. It was Tilly's fault. Every day.